Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. You're welcome to the beginning of a new week. Today, Monday, the 6th of July, 2020. Today, we'll be looking at Acts of Apostles, chapter 13, verse 36 through verse 43. And our topic is, He served God in His generation. Let us pray. Precious Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us into this new week. And thank you for the opportunity to commune with you. Lord, grant that this fellowship, may fellowship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will strengthen us, guide us, and direct us in your ways, that we may know you better, love you more, and serve you more committedly. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. A topic, he served God in his generation. Acts of Apostles chapter 13, verse 36 to 43. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man he is preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. Behold, you despise us, marvel and perish, for I walk a walk in your days, a walk which you will by no means believe, though one we are to declare it to you. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The beginning of our text today, that's verse 36, is very instructive. And that is the statement on David. And it will be interesting to remind us that our text is part of a long discourse of Paul who was ministering at the synagogue where he was invited to address the congregation. Paul was speaking on the message of the gospel, and that is on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He made attempt as he was speaking to Jews who were conversant with the Old Testament scriptures, the prophets, and the book of the law. He made references to what they were used to. And in one of those references, he was pointing out that David spoke about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that David was not speaking about himself because David lived and died. And the resurrection he was speaking of was not about himself, but of Jesus Christ. And that's why in verse 36, he said, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. This is from where we got our topic, he served God in his generation. David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep. 
two things are to be taken note of here. Number one is that David served his generation. It seems God has given each one of us something with which to serve our generation. Whatever you are, whatever profession that you, you belong, it is an opportunity from the day of our birth to the day we will die is the time that has been given to us to serve. No man can serve God in another generation. It is only in your generation that you can serve. That is to say, we have limited time. We have a specific time that has been assigned to us. And one can only serve God in his generation. That is to say, you don't separate the service to God from the service to the generation. We serve God through our generation. We serve God in our generation. And so the question is, are you actually serving God? Are you serving in your generation? When you pass away, how can you be remembered? With what will you be remembered? This is the question God is raising to us this morning. Second one is, David died after serving his generation. No man is everlasting. David fell asleep. He died. But it is interesting that this was after he served his generation. What opportunities are you wasting today? Thinking that you, even if you miss it today, tomorrow you can catch up. That's a deceit. Today cannot come back to you. And so it's better to live with this consciousness. Somebody said, see every day as your last day on earth, your last opportunity. Because it is only when you are alive that you can serve. Don't waste the wonderful opportunities that is coming your way. Opportunity to preach the gospel through words and action. Or be kind to someone. That opportunity may not come tomorrow. So don't waste it. Don't miss it. What talents are you missing? You are gifted in any way. How are you using that gift? Do you realize that you will not be around on earth forever? Moreover, you are young today. Does not mean you will remain young forever. That's why some people at their old age will regret how they wasted their youthful years when they were strong. Those days were wasted. They were alive. They are already old and they cannot reverse the opportunities they missed. And so this message is coming to us as a wake-up call, as a reminder that we have a little time to serve God and it is now that we will serve. But at the center of our text is what I call the message of mission. The message of mission. And that we can see from verse 38. Paul said, Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. Verse 39. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. I want to show you some few things from here. I said, this is the message of mission. This was the message of Paul. This is the heart of what he was driving towards. This is the center where he was going, his goal. The goal of the whole thing, he started saying from verse 13. Look at it this way. He said, brethren, be it known to you that this man was talking, to, talking about Jesus. This Jesus, through him, is preached unto you forgiveness of sin. Sin 
can only be forgiven through Jesus. That is the message of the gospel. Sins are forgiven through Jesus because Jesus had paid for every sin. That is why anybody that will go to hell is not going to hell because of his sin. He is going to hell because he rejected the gift of forgiveness that God has given to man through Jesus Christ. Brethren, I encourage you, receive this forgiveness. It has come through Jesus Christ. Secondly, through Jesus Christ, we are justified. Justification is different from forgiveness. One can be forgiven, and yet he is not justified. When you are justified, your sins are not counted against you. You are seen as sinless. You are seen as having committed no sin. That is to say, coming to Jesus, believing in Jesus, makes you a righteous man. And that's what the Bible is said that he became sin, that we may gain righteousness, that we may take his righteousness. In other words, he took our sinfulness and gave us his righteousness. This can only be gotten through Jesus Christ, and it is for all who believe in him. Have you believed in Jesus? Can't you give your life to him? That is the only way you can be justified. He said, Moses cannot give that. Moses here represents the law. Keeping law, making efforts to be righteous. No, you can be justified before God. Justification can only come through Jesus Christ. Believing in him will give that justification. Forgiveness and justification come through Jesus Christ. To those who believe in him. This is the message of the gospel. Though some people didn't believe, others believed. And that's what we are seeing today. Where do you belong among these two groups? Those who rebel? And that's why he warned them. Make sure, beware, so that you will not belong to those that have been spoken of long ago. Those who would see but will not believe the great work that has been done for us. Why not be counted among those who believe in him? And your sins, I mean your sins, will be forgiven. You will be justified. Before God, you will be seen as a righteous man. May you be counted among such people. And you will not regret for believing in Jesus Christ. May God bless you as you accept this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for ministering to us in this way. Thank you for this revelation, the gift of your son that gave us forgiveness and justification. Grant that all who have listened to this message this morning will be counted among those who believe and are forgiven and justified. And may this righteousness that you've given us Guide us unto the end. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I declare unto you that you will not be counted among the stubborn. Who will not believe? Who will face the wrath of God? Because you did not believe. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.